Thank you, thank you. Good evening and thank you citizens, commission members and staff as I welcome you and call this Stonecrest Plus Advisory Committee meeting to order today, Wednesday, May 25th, 2022 at 6.01 p.m. Madam Deputy uh, City Clerk, would you please do the roll call? Yes. Councilman Rob Turner. Here. Councilwoman Tammy Grimes. Harry Carrie Karan. Elijah Ajaye. Donna Priest Brown. Present. Daryl Taylor. Jessica Fields. Lemuel Hawkins. Jeff Martin. Verna Richelieu. And Stephanie Shine. We do not have a quorum. Thank you, ma'am. And since we do not have a quorum, this will not be recorded as an official meeting, and which means we will not be able to vote on any issues that will be brought before us today. But we will continue on with this meeting as an informational meeting to share what uh, presentation from our city engineer and any other information maybe the members on the dais has to share with you. So as we continue on with the agenda, uh, next on the agenda would be invocation. And so let us all stand, please, for the invocation. Gracious Heavenly Father, we come before your presence honoring, blessing, and exalting your holy name. Thank you for your mercy and grace toward us. We invite you to be in charge of this BLAS meeting tonight and that your precious Holy Spirit will empower us with your wisdom, insight, discernment, direction, and understanding as we govern those we are called to cover through this committee. Be blessed with the labor of our hands and let all that we do give you glory. We also pray for the families that were devastated by the loss of the children and teachers in Texas. We ask that you, Holy Spirit, will comfort, strengthen, and guide them with your grace, your peace, and love through their pain. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may be seated. Uh, next on the agenda is the approval of the agenda, and since we do not have a quorum, we're moving right along. Uh, next would be approval of minutes again. Uh, we're moving on. Uh, we can't vote on that. Uh, are there any public comments? Anyone have any public comments? Madam Deputy City Clerk, do you have any public comments from Zoom or from uh, anybody sending anything by email? No, I do not have okay. any. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Then we'll move on into the presentation of new business today, and uh, our city engineer, uh, Harry, will uh, come forth and give us some information that we, that we need to... Uh, I'm sorry. Are you getting my attention? Oh. Great, thank you. Harry will present some information to the public today that's uh, very vital for us to vote in our next meeting. And so, uh, thank you, Harry. The floor is yours. Thank you, um, um, Chair and the, uh, the, the committee members. Um, I have a presentation to make today, and I'll run through this. And uh, um, at the end, I'll uh, I'll give some time for questions here. So it's, today is uh, uh, May 25th. Excuse me, Harry, you're, you're really low. Is it any way possible you can either bring that mic closer to you or lift it up somewhere where it won't be a struggle for you to speak through it? Um, there you go. Good job. All right, we're ready. Thank you. Uh, can you hear me clearly now? Yes. Yes. Very much. Thank so. you. Um, so it's today is May 25th, uh, 2022, it's PLAST Advisory Committee. Um, I'm just going to give an update on the old business here. The street paving uh, for 2022, uh, we opened the bids on April 25th, uh, 2022. Excuse me, Harry, we've lost uh, visibility on your report. The members up here need to see it on, I guess, that monitor over there. Okay, that's fine. We apologize for the uh, technical interference, but we're back. Thank you. Continue, please. Thank you. So um, just to give you an update on the street paving, we received the bids on April 25th, 2022, and then we received only one, one bid, and uh, it was uh, slightly outside of our 2022 paving budget. And then we decided to rebid that. And then the rebid was placed, uh, advertised on uh, May 16th, 2022. And those are due on June 16, 2022. 
and hopefully we'll have some uh, good number of bids this time and we'll bring back to you the council for uh, approval of a contract at that time. So that is the status on the, our street paving. And the Panola Road study, uh, the DeKalb County Commission approved on April 25th, uh, the IGA between the DeKalb County and the city. And uh, the DeKalb County Transportation Division immediately ordered the traffic counts before the school closes so that they can capture the peak traffic during the school time. So that should be coming uh, to an end at some point. And then at that time, uh, they will have a meeting with us and uh, start uh, continuing the study on that. And then the freight uh, cluster study also, we are waiting for notice to proceed from uh, ARC. And uh, what I heard is that uh, the contract between the GDOT and the ARC is being executed at this time. And once they complete that, we will contact us so that we can go ahead and advertise or release an RFQ to select a consultant uh, to uh, begin the study. And um, on this FLOST update, uh, we, have, we have been working on uh, the scope of work for two uh, new park master plans. Uh, it's almost done, and then uh, once the new parks director come on board, we will get uh, that uh, individual's input, and then we will also release that uh, for RFQs to select the consultants to do those two um, parks, new parks master plans. Uh, there's a new botanical garden at Barrington Parkway and the new Miller Grove uh, Park master plan. And then we will also, once that is on the street, soliciting the qualified consultant to do the master plan. We will be working on the Farrington uh, Park master plan that would be uh, existing park, and then we will release that also. And also we are working on the scope of work for a bicycle, pedestrian, and trail plan. Uh, the scope of work is developed, and then the purchasing department is working on releasing that RFQ. And then we'll be selecting a consultant once uh, that RFQ closes and then we'll bring back to the appropriate committees and the county city council for approval for that. And also um, there are some short term projects that we, are, we have been working on from the transportation master plan. The, the, the short term projects are basically uh, will have to be executed between 2020 and 2024. We are already two years plus into that uh, timeline. And uh, the short term projects are mainly the quick response improvements. Uh, those are addressing any operational and safety issues, signage, striping, and speeding studies. Um, those are the ones covered under the short term quick response uh, improvements. And then the resurfacing, uh, we have been resurfacing from 2019, 2021, and 22. And I give you just an update on the 2022 paving at the beginning of my presentation. And then also the traffic signal maintenance upgrade, also one of the projects listed in the transportation master plans, short term projects. And uh, these are the other projects that listed under the short term projects. Bus stop enhancement that was completed in 2021. And the second one is an ordinance. Uh, we are required to pass an ordinance for the freight cluster. And once the study is completed, that study will recommend an ordinance and then we'll bring that to the, uh, the city council for approval of that ordinance at that time. And then also the Panola Road study, I gave you an update on that also previously. And then uh, there are several sidewalk segments in that short-term projects list. And uh, there was one of them is the Browns Mill uh, uh, Elementary School sidewalk uh, that was fortunately that was completed as part of the roundabout project uh, on the other side of the park and that is completed in 2020. And um, thus the other two sidewalks are uh, Browns Mill Road sidewalk, that is from Evans Mill Road to Arabia Mountain Path. Uh, we just completed the design scope, and then we will be looking to get the survey started so that we can move on uh, to complete the design. Uh, the, the, the other sidewalk is the Covington Highway sidewalk, um, that is from Miller Road to Thicket Way, and then uh, we just completed the scope for that. So this is the first one, the Browns Mill Road uh, sidewalk we talked about. It starts at the Evans Mill Road here and then comes all the way to the Arabia Mountain Trail. And this is the one we have been trying to get going 
um, you know, these days to get the design and construction done. The second one is the Covington Road from Miller Road all the way to Ticket Way. That is the second sidewalk. And also we are looking to do a small section. You can see that the sidewalk is ending there. There is no sidewalk and then people are walking at the edge of, this, uh, of the pavement here. And then basically a small section of this we are looking to complete also so that there is a connection between the two segments of sidewalks. And um, the other short term projects are, there's another section of Evans Mill Road sidewalk and another section of Miller Road sidewalk and then the um, Ottawa Trail sidewalk also. Once the other three that we mentioned get going, we'll be uh, working on the other three sidewalks. And then um, this is, uh, the, the next one is the Panala Road sidewalk. There are two sections of sidewalks on Panala Road. Uh, we are putting a hold onto that until the Panola right road study is completed. And then at that time, we will know exactly whether the study is going to recommend a sidewalk or multi-use path or bicycle uh, trail. So we will know that. So we're just going to put these two on hold until the Panola road study is completed. And uh, the, and then we are, there are some transportation issues we have been dealing with. Um, there's one is the Klondike Road and South Goddard Road intersection. This is uh, the elementary school intersection. Uh, there have been complaints about uh, multiple accidents. And then we have reported that to DeKalb County Transportation Division. Uh, they are performing a speed study. Uh, once the speed study is completed, we will know exactly the number of accidents and, uh, and the recommendations, what we need to do at that intersection. There is an another one, uh, the Farrington Road or Panola Road. Uh, residents are complaining about the accidents. And then we have reported that also to DeKalb County Transportation Division. Um, they are performing a speed study on that section also. The request for, uh, to install uh, speed radar signs. And then once that study comes out with the recommendation, we will know what we need to do. Another uh, uh, complaint we, we, we have been hearing is that the Miller Road and Thompson Mill Road intersection, um, DeKalb completed uh, you may know this, this is a four-way stop sign intersection with the red flashing lights on all directions. Um, DeKalb completed a study in 2019. Uh, we need to update the study and also come up with the concept plan. And then uh, once we have the concept plan, uh, we will know the next step to move on. Uh, this is the intersection I'm talking about. So you can see this uh, Miller Road, Thompson Mill Road runs east to west, and Miller Road runs north to south. Um, the, the, the reason it is that, um, even though it is a four-way stop, uh, when, when the drivers come to those um, stop, um, either they ignore who came first to that intersection, or uh, they just don't see others and take off. And um, there were several accidents reported in this intersection. So what I am requesting from the SPLAS committee and the council to consider uh, updating uh, a detailed traffic study and update the traffic accident data from 2017 to 2022 and also come up with the concept. Um, con compare a uh, uh, always signal versus a roundabout and see which option is going to work best for this intersection and, uh, and then you know, once we start that, we will know, and then that study also will give us some cost estimates. Excuse me, um, for one more, Harry, I apologize for interrupting you, but I do have a question in reference to that. Uh, who is responsible for the study, first of all? Is it City of Stonecrest or is it DeKalb County? And second part of that question is, um, who will be responsible for the main maintenance of it or the implementation of it once it's been approved by City Council or whomever? So, so far, um, DeKalb County has been performing small speed studies. They are using their uh, in-house staff to do that. What, uh, so that, that, um, that study is very um, basic. And um, when citizens call them and ask them for a signal, they will do that study um, and say that whether the signal is warranted or not, what we are looking at here is instead of um, deciding that signal is the only solution, 
what we want to look at is whether the signal is going to work or a roundabout will work. The reason we want to look at that is, is once you pick the signal, based on the, the, the number of uh, traffic taking the left turn from the eastbound um, Ponson Mill Lane into northbound Miller Road, we may end up building left turn lanes on all four legs of this intersection so that with one cycle of, or maybe two cycles of the signal, we can clear both ways um, of Thompson Mill or Miller Road. So one, one uh, cycle will clear both left turns from uh, both sides of the Thompson Mill and the second cycle will clear the north and southbound left turns of uh, Miller Road. Um, I, I, I see what you're saying, but I guess my question is, who makes that decision on whether it be a roundabout or whether it be a, 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 a traffic light or whoever, is, is it DeKalb County or, or is it the city of Stonecrest? Who makes that final decision? The, the final uh, decision relies with the city of Stonecrest. Okay. Since it is our asset, uh, what will happen is the traffic study and the concept plan will uh, look at both options and the right of way impact and the cost for both options. And we have to remember this now, that once you put the roundabout, um, I would say nearly zero maintenance on it. But if you go for the signal, we'll have a continuous power bill for that. There will be a meter running. Uh, plus, um, you have to replace the signal heads and you have to do uh, the cabinet, signal cabinet, you got to change the parts and you got to maintain it. Plus, there is a uh, um, lightning or thunder once you get that knocked out for a short term. Somebody has to be there. It, it is going to operate like a four-way stop sign, and then you have to be careful with that, and then you have to go and repair it. So if the recommendation from the study is going to be a roundabout, we would go with that roundabout. Um, the only thing we have to be considering when you go to the roundabout is that there is a large uh, Georgia Power Pole there on the, there is a Georgia Power Power Pole, large Power Pole in the northwest corner of that. So we need to make sure that that is considered during the survey and see whether, uh, because it's gonna be expensive to move that. Um, that's, that's very expensive. Now if we're talking about a roundabout, I, I, I'm presuming, and of course that's why you're here, you're the uh, area expert or the uh, subject matter expert, when we have to encroach on some people's property, because it's a very, very small area. If you look at that, uh, the white cross there, um, all those property belong to the city. Uh, you, you would think that uh, there is a narrow right of way, but you have a 70 foot wide right of way on Thompson Mill, and then 75, actually 75 on Thompson Mill, and then 70 on Miller Road. That's a lot of right of way. And even if we ended up taking some right away, it is going to be very minimal. It's like a corner triangle, it's not much. So there is, and then we are not looking at a full-blown uh, GDOT standard large roundabout here. We are looking at a single lane, uh, local rural roundabout here. Um, you know, the roundabouts are much better than four-way stops and other things because roundabouts avoid uh, the T-bone accidents and also uh, rear end uh, accidents. Uh, the roundabouts, um, you know, only accidents you will see in the roundabouts is a side swipe, and side swipes are the the injuries and fatalities are much smaller compared to the t boning accidents and the and the rear ending accidents. So um, roundabout is the the best way to go if that study recommends a roundabout. The reason is that it is zero maintenance or you know, almost zero maintenance com compared so, to the signals. So, so is it basically, are we looking at from a zero maintenance point or are we looking at it from a safety point? Are they both pretty much the same in reference to that roundabout being there? Yes, safety is number one and then the maintenance is number two. Okay. That's something, um, you know, we, we need to look into. Yes, sir. So the, the cost also, you, you mentioned something about um, to do, to move the pole would be very costly. So. The overall recommendation would safety proceed the cost of your recommendation? Correct. So the three things we'll be looking at is uh, the best safe recommendation option, uh, roundabout versus the signal. Number two is the cost. 
we look at the cost and see that um, you know when you do the signal um, left turn those have to be in each direction so all four directions about 300 feet of left turn lanes and uh, that's going to cost some money so or versus we look at the power pole and the roundabout cost and so, so they will be comparing everything and then we'll get a recommendation out of that study okay harry a couple of our members have just come in can you kind of give them a little uh, go back and give them a little i guess a little synopsis of what you're talking about so they have an understanding of what they're looking at on the screen a little bit please yes so this is um, i was going through the the traffic issues that uh, facing uh, the city of stonecrest at this this time and these are the three came up during the um, this year to us and then the, uh, i was talking about the third one the third, third one is the uh, miller road thompson mill road intersection and um, this has been um, I guess on the books or complaint came in uh, on this intersection for a long time based on the accidents there. Uh, currently, this intersection has all way stop signs. So we have four stop signs in all directions and there is a, a red flashing light at the top for all way direction. So um, what happens is, um, you know, in, a, in an ideal world, whoever comes to that intersection first will have the right of way so they can leave first. Uh, the accident happens because people ignore that rule and then, you know, even though they know that that other person came first, they take off. And and then thinking the other the person who came uh, first is going to stop. The second one is, um, you know, sometimes they don't see people coming on, on the left. Uh, they take off an accident. So. Uh, in 2019, uh, City of Stonecrest um, uh, requested DeKalb County to do a study. Uh, DeKalb County do their use their in-house staff to do studies. Those are primarily basic. They do the traffic counts for a short time, basically. They, they do the traffic count for three peak hours. They will do from in the morning, like 6 to 9, and then they'll do some lunchtime, and then they'll do, come back and do it uh, the evening, 5 to 7 or 5 to 8, or something like that. And then they used that to do an analysis, and then they came up with a recommendation of, um, you know, traffic signal is required. Uh, the reason they came up with that recommendation is because the question was whether do we need a right of uh, signal or not. So the answer is yes. Excuse, excuse me, Harry. You said they suggested that a traffic signal should be put there. Am I correct? Correct. And when was that? What year was that? This was in 2019. And what was the reason for that? For us not moving to do that, I'm just curious. I'm, I'm, honestly, I'm not sure. Um, you know, what, you sent me the email um, Monday, I guess. Right. And then I requested uh, all the documents from them Monday, and then I received that on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I looked at it, and then the traffic data, um, the accident data is actually from I think 2013 to 2017, so it's five years old. So right. we don't have any accident data in the report. 18, 19, 20, 21, and 22. Um, so, and the reason I'm asking, because I'm getting a lot of calls, and I live in that area, and there's a lot of accidents, there's some problems with 18 wheelers and everything. So I'm just wondering, if we were recommended by, um, I presume, I guess, a study that was done by DeKalb County, why didn't we do it then? I mean, why didn't we do it three years ago? And it's still just sitting there and causing more accidents and causing more problems. That's why I'm just I'm just concerned about that. And uh, if the, if that's our responsibility as a city, then we should have moved on that. I just want to know who's responsible. That's why I ask you: Is it the Cab County or is it the City of Stonecrest responsible for that area right there? All the capital improvement projects relies with us now. After this plus passing, that we will be the one um, taking over those capital projects. And um, on this intersection. Um, you know, you can see that uh, the white cross line, all those property belong to the, uh, the city, and it is, it is a large area. You have a 75-foot right-of-way on Thompson Mill Road and a 70-foot right-of-way on Miller Road. And then what I am recommending here is that we consider options of a roundabout, a small rural uh, roundabout, and also it's a single-lane roundabout versus an all-way uh, signal. The reason is that the, 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 once you put the signals, you have to give um, left turns also based on the traffic data. But once you put the left turn signal for one uh, direction, you got to put it in all four directions. 
Uh, that would be those left turn lanes would be 300 feet long. And um, there's, you're talking about some good widening of the streets and everything. And uh, you know we need to compare the cost of the signal installation and then the left turn lanes uh, plus uh, versus the roundabout. Uh, the roundabout will be there, it's a single lane, so there will be no widening on the lanes. Single lanes will come and go on your right direction and then it'll be all way, um, you know, um, so we, 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 what we wanted to do is to update this traffic study and uh, include the traffic data from 2017 to 2022, okay. partial, and then come up with the recommendation and then uh, compare the compare two uh, ways to solve the problems. One is signal and one is roundabout. Okay, one final question concerning this. How long will this study take and when can this study begin? Um, it's basically uh, the only problem we have is that uh, we may have to wait for the schools to start. The reason is because we don't want to be collecting the traffic data during the schools are closed. Um, that's the only only issue we have. Um, so the traffic study, sh study should not take more than two to three months. Uh, but we have to time the collection of the data. And uh, and then, you know, the accident data is uh, readily available with uh, GDOT. But you want to get some more additional traffic numbers. You need to wait for it. Uh, but I will talk to the traffic engineers and see whether we can expedite that and using the traffic, uh, the accident data only instead of collecting um, any new data. Anyway, we'll, we'll work from there. So this is uh, the third project we are looking at is, and then once um, once we do this, and then you know we'll bring back the recommendation to the SPAS committee, and then and see what option we, we want to take. Do you have any idea what the cost of this study would be? Uh, it'll be way under $50,000. Way under? Oh, oh. Yes. Under? Yes. Okay. And a concept plan, yes. It'll be, uh, we're not doing a survey, we're not doing a design. Basically, we are collecting the data okay. and, uh, and then doing a study. It's basically a counts and then pulling the data from the GDOT website and uh, the traffic engineer's time. I have a question. Is there a budgetary component added with the study? Meaning that once we put the roundabouts in, is it ever, is uh, maintenance ever calculated within the, uh, within the uh, total study? Because when you put the roundabout, if it's, if it's landscape, then that's an additional burden onto whomever public works. We don't have, to my knowledge, a, a full public, public public's work department. So you know, we've got weeds, things, things of that nature. Uh, we've got to, we've got to fight, just like the roundabout here at Klondike, um, Rockland Road. So I'm asking, is 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 the budgetary piece, or is it strictly data, and then we take it? This this concept uh, report will recommend and give us the numbers for that. Um, we we were just talking about the the maintenance cost of signalization versus the roundabout. So the roundabout maintenance expense is almost zero. Um, you know, if somebody knocked the concrete out, you gotta go and fix it. And then if there is any landscaping done in the island, um, that need to be maintained. Whereas the signal, um, you know, you have to change the, the, the heads. The lights burn out all the time. And also the cabinets, uh, you have to replace the parts and things like that. And also, um, when there's a lightning hit or something, um, you know, I have a little bit of experience. When the lightning hit the signal, it's a chaos. Um, you know, people are used to the signals and then stopping all the time. And all of a sudden, um, there's no signal. Everybody's confused. And, um, you know, um, some of the major intersections we have to bring uh, police to, you know, have that intersection because the stop signs are gone. You had to uh, run and get your temporary stop signs and put it there immediately after that get knocks out. Um, and then um, sometimes when the when the lightning hits, the whole circuit is burned or kind of, you know, totally burned and then you got to change a lot of parts and everything. And also you have, a, you got to remember now, you have a running electric meter there because 
there is a power meter there, so you get to monthly pay those things. Uh, compared to uh, those expenses for a signal, roundabout is, I would say, uh, you have a, you need a landscape crew once a month or once a, you know, whatever the frequency you wanted to do. And then that would be uh, once the city, you know, have that crew, um, it's it's nothing compared when they when they maintain multiple places. You know that that's nothing. Uh, but the signals, um, you know, traffic, um, you know, maintenance crew will be there, bucket truck will be there, and then they'll be replacing the lights and then no, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, the only issue we have is that here for the roundabout is that there is a large Georgia power pole at the northwest corner there. And then if if the if we could not play with this intersection and shift it away from that, that's a major expense to move that. But you you want to avoid that at any cost, moving that large power pole. There are other poles also on your on your south um, southwest corner and then the northeast corner. Um, those would be made, uh, remo uh, relocated free of charge because we have a prior rights of the right of way. Um, uh, the city or county owns the right of way, so they would that those would be moved free of charge. But the large one, um, definitely, they will make us pay Georgia Power. Mr. Chair, um, Mr. Harry, good evening. I'm sorry. Um, two questions: the roundabout. And you keep saying single lane. Are you talking about one that looks? Are you familiar with the one at Klondike and Rockland? Um, I know of the one at. Um, not the Brownsville one at Brownsville. In front of the Brownsville, no. Now that's a that's a double, a double one, yes. Okay, so you're just saying one lane. Just one lane, yes. Okay. Only so one that's lane. That's what that's what's at uh, Rockland and Correct. Contact. That's the okay. one. Yes. All right. So that's good. Um, second thing, they are, and I pulled over, asked a couple of questions, um, at the corner of Rock Springs and Miller Road. There have been crews there that have been doing underground power. Do we know or have we asked or can we ask to see if Georgia Power has any plans of maybe moving that pole themselves for underground burial and that may not be some cost that we would have to incur as we talk about doing the roundabout? Because I, I like roundabout. Yes, yes. Um, that crew you're talking about is not the Georgia Power crew, I think. Um, you know, uh, I think they're working on Panola Road too. I mean, they've been there for forever. And that I know that you know they these are um, the orange duct they are wearing. Yeah, those are not the power uh, lines. Those are uh, communication cables. Yes, those are um, fiber optic. That's the one they're doing. Power um, they will not be burying on the main 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 road. Yes. Guy with the muscles told me it was power, so I'm sorry. I say power. Right? I mean that's good if they if they're going to give us uh, all the underground uh, uh, power that will be great because you know they they will be charging a lot of money for that for the city. We ask them to do. Any other questions? Yes, um, just a follow up from the short term projects. Are there any estimation on the timeline for those short line projects? I mean, what's what defines? Is it a month, two months, or is it cost? So right now, uh, we are looking to get the survey work started. Um, scope is ready. I gave that to um, one of the one call, um, you know, consultants here, and then I'm waiting for them to give us a call. If, if the work is under fifty thousand uh, dollars, we can proceed without going and seeking the competitive bids. Um, so I'm waiting for that quote, and then once we have that, we will know whether we can move on. That uh, the survey would take probably a good uh, three to four weeks, and then uh, the design would should take about two months. And then um, we are not looking to do the full blown design here because these are very small sidewalks. Um, basically, uh, direction um, um, like plans for the contract contractors. So we'll take those plans and give it to three contractors and get some quotes and bring it back to the council to approve it. 
we'll go and do the ship construction. And then our plan is to go ahead and do these three this year. Complete these three this year. Because we haven't done any sidewalks since the incorporation of the city, so we want to get some of the sidewalks going. And uh, my last slide is that this is our goal for the 2022-2024. Um, this is under the first SPLOST that uh, the, the people voted to pass. What we wanted to do is to complete the construction of the sidewalks on the short-term project list. And also we want to uh, begin the design of some of the mid-term projects. Thereby, we wanted to create some shovel-ready projects. The reason I, I say that say the shovel-ready projects is that every time you go for a grant or some kind of a uh, federal or state grant, they ask us, um, do you have any short uh, shovel ready projects? Um, you know, the federal and state governments are willing to give funding for the shovel ready projects than projects that we haven't done nothing on it. So we want to create some, uh, do some design and get it ready so that uh, we can seek funding for that. And the third one is uh, the seek grant opportunities for uh, construction of the midterm projects. And also, we want to prepare for the SPLOS 2 between 2022 and 2024 so that um, when we go for the referendum, we have something to show to the, the, the residents that this is our accomplishment and this is what we wanted to do for the second SPLOS. Uh, I do have a question for you, Harry, in reference to uh, these studies and different plans coming in. We know that we're going to have these proposals, and there will be certain amounts of money we'll be spending on those. And if we find out that we're saving money, let's say we're saving 2 or $3 million uh, more than we thought we would be spending, are we going back to uh, revisit the street pavings uh, for this year also? Uh, what would we do with that money? I, again, we're not a bank, so I don't want to just say we'll put it in a bank. I mean, we're not trying to draw interest in. We're not a bank. We're here to take this money that the people... Uh, voted for and to utilize every penny of it. So uh, what will we do with that additional monies that we'll be saving? Can we look at uh, adding additional streets or other things that might not be on the, uh, the plan for the midterms, or the, mid, uh, mid, uh, yeah, the midterm goals or whatever, mid-year goals? It's up to the, the committee and the council to, you know, direct us to, you know, to go in whichever direction we want to do. What I heard uh, when I came in is that uh, we haven't done anything other than the paving since 2019, 20, 21, 22. And then we would like to uh, do other work also, like park projects. Um, you know, we did some maintenance work in the parks. We haven't done any um, major renovation or any master plans. So we are planning to do those this year. And also we wanted to do some um, sidewalks and gear up for some transportation projects. And you have to remember now, we have the ELMIG money coming from the GDOT every year. It's about half a million dollars. No, I, I think it's great that we're, you know, we're spreading the wealth and we're doing these other things and being diverse in reference to how we're spending this plus money. I'm just saying with additional monies that we might not have thought about it, might not even realize that we'll have, even doing those, these projects, how will we do that and what will we do that additional million or $2 million? I'm just using that as an example. Uh, it would be, you said, the decision of the council in reference to how we would direct that money? That's correct, yes, yes. That we, we, we you know, the staff or only can recommend anything, so it's up to the council and the committees. Uh, the committees to recommend and then the council to approve it. So. Okay, um, Chair, I have a question. Um, so we're not paving any roads this year? We are paving straight. We are. Okay. A, a lot of them, actually. Awesome. Yes, a lot right. more than we have been paying this year. Okay, so I'm gonna ask this question again. Um, just wanted to know the percentage again of the roads that are have been paid. Paid. I think I, this is like my third time asking. Yes. So um, I will not be able to give that answer today. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, and that's fine. Yeah. So what we did was in 2019 and 2020, and even 2021, uh, we paved only the collectors and then the major roads. The common. Yeah. Correct. And then um, those roads are expensive to pave. The reason being that for some multi-lane, um, you can see that you know, it's got, um, Mall Parkway, we paved all the way from Klondike all the way to the uh, right. county, county line. Right. Um, those are um, five, six lanes, and also the, the asphalt thickness is much 
bigger than the, the residential streets. Uh, this, and then there were some or few residential streets got paved uh, in the past uh, 2000, you know, prior to 2022. And uh, this year, all the streets are residential streets. Being paved in a lot of them. And then, you know, like I explained last time, we are going by the PCI number, payment right. conditions uh, index. We are stopping at 37 um, this year. Right. And the next year we will be moving from 37 towards the 40s and then we'll continue to do this. Right. But uh, um, it is not going to be a, a 10, 12 million dollar project the next years. Right. Because most of the money will be spent on the other projects uh, in 23 and 24 and 25. But still we will have a good amount of money will be going to the street payments. Every year we'll be continuing to paying that. Okay, okay. so because um, I, I, there used to be a listing on the website. You had, when you, after you came, you had this listing of the... Correct. And I'm not seeing that. A, a friend was asking me about Idlewood subdivision. I saw, when I looked a month ago, I saw Idlewood on that list of roads to be paved. I don't know if you could answer that that off the top of your head, if you know about Idlewood uh, subdivision? I think it is there. The, it is right now, it is under um, city engineer, uh, under city engineer, um, and then there are uh, broken down into every year. And, and how would I answer the question my friend is asking? So I was going to go back. I went back to look at it to, um, last week. I didn't see it because she was. I'm, I'm going to give you that answer uh, end of the meeting. I'm going okay, to get, get awesome. to listen. I'll give it to you. Okay. And then my last question, um, the, the state roads, is it correct that all state, is it, is it is the general rule that all state roads have a number? So for example, yes. like 212 and 155. Correct. State SR, road. SR number, state route number. State yes. route number. Yes. So um, on, on 212, right, um, going east towards Rockdale, I noticed like in Rockdale County, once you cross over the county line, there's all this paving all the way back, um, all the way east, uh, almost to Covington, right before Covington, Georgia. Now their, their roads are real pretty, right? So anything west of that, do we know when that's happening? I don't at this point. Uh, okay. Uh, we can check with the, uh, G dot and see whether they have any plans to pave that section. Okay. This is state route, um, you said 212. 212? Mm hmm. So between, yeah, 212 between, um, uh, so, you, so it would be 212 um, once you cross over the county line to DeKalb, so that's coming west. Um, I, 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 don't, I wouldn't say up to 155 because I don't know how far down it's not paved, but I would say Browns Mill Road, I mean, uh, Panola Road. Intersection. We we'll definitely check on that and let you know. Okay, appreciate it. Harry, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, I do have a question. Maybe you can answer this. I don't know. It, may, it might might be off the beaten path a little bit. I know that the streets in Stonecrest, the paving is our responsibility. But am I correct? And I want to be a hundred percent sure that the patching of potholes is a responsibility of the Cab County. And if that it, that is correct. Okay, so if that being the case, is there a list that DeKalb County has for the streets in Stonecrest that they are moving to fill potholes? Because there's a lot of potholes. As you know, we've talked and we visited several areas. Do they have a list or a timeline when they can move or operate on those potholes until we can get to those streets to pave them? Um, we have a list of what we are sending. We have, we have a list and what we do, we submit that list to DeKalb? Correct. So okay. um, this is how we are doing it. Um, we are sending a work order to DeKalb County. And um, so once we send that, these are done by email, email to DeKalb County. Uh, once we send that email, we get a response for that email saying that uh, we received your re uh, request and this is the ticket number or work order number, whatever that is. Um, and then that's, that's what we hear. And um, I wish there is a, another communication comes out of DeKalb County saying that this ticket number has been completed and it's closed. And uh, it doesn't happen. Um, 
So, you know, we, we need to work with the Cap County to, um, we don't want to be uh, sending the work orders and then going back and checking whether it's paved or not. And I mean, if that is the case, you got to check it every week and every day, whether it's paved or not. It is, it is you know, it, it is ideally, it would be great uh, once the crew has completed that work and then they inform whoever they need to inform there at the Cap County and they inform us uh, this work order has been completed. What I heard is that uh, they are working on a, some kind of a work order system, a new work order system to computerize that. And then that, um, you know, I think it's city works or something like that. And then once that is in place, uh, residents should be able to put in a work order using their email. Then they will get a response directly from that software once it is completed. Now at this point, um, that is not the case. So. Um, the, the purpose of me asking that question is for the benefit of the public. I want them to understand the policy, the policies and procedures on how to move forward in reference to potholes in their in their communities or whatever, so they don't think that we're ignoring them or nothing's going on. But to let them know that things are being submitted, work orders are being submitted to move to get those things or those potholes or those areas repaired while they're waiting for paving or other uh, responsibilities from our city. So I just wanted to make sure that the public understood that there are processes and how this system works in reference to getting those things taken care of. Yes, so there is a system. Um, it could be improved so that uh, there is two-way communication and particularly um, either the citizens are directly uh, responded or uh, the city of Stonecrest staff get a response and then we can inform the, the residents uh, of the status. And, and another thing, I just thought about this, and, and I'm pretty sure that Councilwoman Grimes would agree with me. If there's some areas, uh, potholes in our areas or our districts, it would be good if we could send that information to us to let us know that, you know, what you're doing in reference to our communities or the work orders are coming in for, you know, the streets in our district. So when, when constituents ask us what's happening in our communities, we can say, well, you know, the work orders are coming, here's a copy of it or whatever. But if you can just let us know, send us that information, that you know, a work order has been sent on so and so street in district whatever, so we'll have an understanding and some idea of what's going on in the community also. We have a spreadsheet and we can share it. Good. Uh, that would be okay. And did I just put you on the spot, Councilwoman Grimes, or do you agree with me? Hello. Okay, I just wanna make sure. Okay, thank you. All right, any other questions? Uh, Mr. Gear, do you remember what um, was the last session you gave us um, information, last council meeting that you gave us for um, addressing some concerns Ms. Uh, Therese Brown has about the paving. I just wanted to pull that up on my computer over here. Do you remember, was it March or April, I mean, uh, February or March, and you gave us the paving list with all of the, do you remember? I think it was March when he, his first meeting. Okay. And yeah, the... it was March 30, 23rd. Okay, just trying to get you something so that uh, yeah. maybe you can have some of your concerns alleviated. Okay, all right, I'm just looking. Hopefully we'll, we'll, um, we will know uh, the bid information by um, third week of June, and then we will know uh, the schedule at that time, and then um, I get calls from the residents. Um, I had one yesterday, um, you know, they were th saying that our street was supposed to be paved in March, nothing happened. So I explained to them that you know, there is a little delay here and then what, we will get this going. One other thing, Mr. Harry, could you just state again for public um, edification, there are times, even though we may have dates attached to uh, the proposed paving schedule, but there are other issues that would stop us from paving. Could you Correct. speak to Yes, that, so um, the timeline is that um, for the 2022 paving is uh, we send the, uh, we bid this in uh, actually March. We bid this in, Mar I think it's March 22nd. And then uh, we open the bids on April 25th. Exactly, you know, you gotta advertise this for 30 days. Uh, unfortunately, we received only one bid which is about seven million dollars more than we expected. So uh, we were we were um, analyzing the bids and say what happened here. Um, we looked at it. Um, the package or the bid number of streets in that package may be too large for a smaller uh, local small businesses to bid. 
and also we had some tight deadlines on it because we wanted to get this done. So that may have created this, you know, the large package and, and the, the number of days we had that may have just discouraged um, some of the companies to bid on it. So what we did was we looked at it and we broke that into four small packages now based on the geographical area. So the, the west side, I would say northwest side, all the streets were put together one package and everything north of I-20 is one package. And then two other packages were put in south one and then the, the roads around the mall area one. So there are four packages we put together. Those are reasonable size. Um, now uh, the smaller companies will be able to bid on it now. So um, hopefully we'll get more people bidding on it. And also we tweaked a little bit on the specifications of how much streets we want to mill, how much we want to put it back and things like that. So hopefully, let's keep our fingers crossed and we get more than one bid. And those are reasonable prices. Uh, if the prices are lower and those comes under the budget, that's the good news. Uh, then we can, you know, the council can talk about what we wanted to do with that, whatever the savings is. So um, let's not, uh, you know, talk uh, too much out of that for now. And then once we have the bids, we'll come back and um, present that to the council. And then uh, we get the bids going. Once the, the we receive the bids, we'll bring that to the council. And once the council approve the contract, we'll execute the contract. It'll take about a week or two. And then we'll issue a notice to proceed. Uh, once that, there will be a timeline for that. And um, that timeline could be extended based on the weather. Uh, if it is raining, that days will not be counted towards that. Uh, the temperature has to be about uh, 50 degrees, certain temperature, so that when you bring the asphalt from the plant, it doesn't cool down before we lay it out and roll it. Because if you if you uh, put a cold asphalt and lay it, it's going to brittle and come out. So um, all those things is, things are a factor, and hopefully we're not going to have any of those 30s and 40s temperatures uh, until you know November sometime in December. So um, you know, we want to uh, get this going. And then pay one till you know the temperature just goes down, and uh, luckily all these are residential streets, so uh, we don't have a whole lot of traffic issues or anything like that. So I have an, one last question, Chair. I'm glad you brought up that um, the bid. Uh, you said it was over at seven million. Correct. Okay. Um, I didn't look at the financials for May, but I guess we're still at fifteen billion in terms of balance. I don't have that information. You, you're okay. probably close. Yes. Okay. Yes. So we have some um, money building up for a while now. So we wanted to um, get this going. And surprisingly, the, the the collection did not go down during the COVID uh, COVID time. So that's a that's a good thing. One, just one quick last question. Um, I know with the financials. You have money coming in and out, right? You have, right? So you have the deposit every month from the Department of Revenue. Uh, then you have the activity withdrawals paid and out. And interest also. And the interest comes in. That's positive. Yes. Because um, I'm always calling that top number the spin, but maybe that's not a spin. That $32 million, for example, I think we were around $32 million. It may be. I, I don't are think you, Are you looking at the total SPLOS collection? Or? Yeah. Receipts, yeah. So far. Right. Yes, that's that's close number. Yes, is it? Would you say it is a is a spin or is it something other? So that's the collection, total collection. Total collection. Collection. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. I don't think we have spent uh, that much yet. How much have you spent? I, I don't have the top. Okay. I don't I want to give you a wrong million, number. I can I can bring all these. Uh, spreadsheets. Yeah, that's fine. I thought it was at thirty two million based on the finance. There, there are three or four spreadsheets I prepared after I came in here in okay. one sheet per year. Okay. And then I can email it to you. Yeah, I just want to make sure I email it to the right chair. So I think you distributed that first. Yeah, I, I thought I did, but it maybe April. You, I, we got April. You, okay, yeah, we did. Because I want to make sure that every member have a copy of that. Okay. You know, always update those reports. So thank you for that. Any other questions, comments? Any other questions, committee members? 
Yeah, just one last question. As it relates to the updates and the inquiries from citizens, um, have you worked with any other municipalities that had mobile applications to help capture some of those inquiries, even tracking um, similar to, I believe it's the 611, or um, I forgot what they use in New York, where you can report just about anything related to a municipality via an app, whether it's a tree down, a pothole, whatever the case may be. I did, actually, yes. I, I was at Brookhaven. Uh, uh, we had one. So basically, you, you can do it from your mobile phone. Um, you you got to have a, your GPS on when you do that. So you basically have that um, have that software open, and then you'll have a map at the top and then typing at the bottom. And then you click that location first and then go and... Um, you know, enter your name and the email, and then the the, the issue there, and then press it, and then um, it goes to the city. Yes, um, it's it is there. Um, it's used. Um, it's very helpful. Um, is it is it holistic? Does it provide the updates or the status? It's actually no. It's it's used only to input the um, input the work order. And then um, there are two ways to do that. Some people do it. Uh, you can you can uh, put your name there and put your email address. And then once you do that, you will get a response for that email every time. So once you put in there, it'll tell you we've received your request. And then um, it is it is called uh, CityWorks. It is connected to the CityWorks. So the CityWorks has a couple of modules there. One is the the public interaction module, the other one is the work order module. So um, somebody will be monitoring that, a staff will be monitoring that public interaction, and then um, say you go to a field and see there is a power pole down. Go and go there and then click that dot and then type your name. Uh, there are two ways to do it. You can do it as an anonymous or you can do it as a person that, you know, once you put the anonymous, you don't have to give the email address, and you will never get any response back if you do that. But if you identify yourself and you put your email address, uh, you will get an email back from the system saying that your request has been received. And then um, what what happens is from that, that module, public uh, the staff will take it up and then investigate it before they do anything. And then they'll go to the work order module and enter a work order. Once that work order is gone to the whoever the person who is handling that, they will finish the work and enter the results on it. The staff will be able to pull that and then go back and enter into this public uh, module, interaction module. So the person who put in the work order will get a response by email. Your request have been completed. Yeah, I, I would love to talk to you additional about it. Uh, I'm just curious about the weight. Um, is it similar to if, if multiple constituents calculate the same location, does, does it prioritize that, you know? And I'm saying this because AT&T used to have an app called Mark the Spot. Yes. And if Georgia Power bad, has that too, actually. Yes. yes. So if it's bad connectivity and the more people mark the spot, yes. it takes precedence. So would the pothole situation in that scenario be similar? Th this is, this is the, the way it is done. Even people are reporting all these things through that public interaction module. All of those are verified by the public work staff. The reason is that sometimes people don't really get the right location. And then um, they would be telling you that northwest corner of this intersection is there's an issue. It could be actually a southwest corner or whatever that is. So, But the GPS quadrants were fixed that. Jeep, if, it, if they enter it right, it'll be fixing it. But Some, I thought it captures through the app. Correct. Okay. Yeah. And then sometime when they put it in, they will not use the GPS. They will just enter something without using the top portion. Okay. Once they do that, they may say that the lights is off or not working on Miller Road. And... Uh, Georgia Power is not going to be driving up and down on the entire Miller Road to try and figure out this. So the staff will go there and pinpoint that and then correct that work order and then make sure that 
the work order, when the work order goes, it, it is accurate because you don't want these contractors to be going and hunting and seeing what the real issue is that. We want to give them the accurate information and so that they don't have to spend time in looking for a work. We wanted them to be doing the work instead of looking to see where that work is. So um, it is doable. You know, Georgia Power, um, you can actually go and do that in the computer. You don't have to, you don't even have to have, a, um, you don't even have to go to the field. You basically open the, the, the map on there and then you see the power pole, you click on it and say that the light is down on that. And then um, there is a number, there is a label attached to each of those poles. They will know which pole it is. So when they put the work order to their crew, they will put that power pole number there and then they'll send them to go and change the lights. Yeah, I, I appreciate it. Um, thank you. I just think it's um, it warrants um, hearing you state that. And it was sounds like it was efficient and beneficial for the city of Brookhaven. Yes. And the so constituents. I have a presentation uh, in a work session uh, to the council in June, I think June 13th. Uh, we wanted to discuss about service delivery of um, what services um, City of Stonecrest is providing now and what services um, DeKalb County is providing now and uh, what are our options. And then I will make the presentation to the council to consider um, what we, the council and the, and the citizens of Stonecrest wanted to do. We will continue to put work orders or we wanted to go and fix the potholes. That's the, the decision the elected officials have to make at that some point. Um, you know, how, how we wanted to spend our time. On. Do we want to spend the time on work orders and spreadsheets and, and then running around and checking whether that pothole is uh, fixed or uh, we want to get our own contractor and then um, scribe send a work order and then we want to go and get this done in 24 hours. That's the question that we'll be asking to the council, which direction we want to go. So how we want to spend our energy and money on. Well, I can give you my vote now if you want it. <laughs> <laughs> so Mr. Harry, it sounds like what Mr. Taylor was talking about, or Member Taylor was talking about would be Something that would be beneficial for the constituents here in Stonecrest, but because we don't have a public works department, we, you know, what staff would be receiving that if we had something like that at this point? That would be very taxing on the people we already have because that's not their responsibility because they have other departments that they're working in. So I hear what you're saying about what we want in terms of the service delivery and you know the options that we have. So I think that's a, a really great um, conversation. Yes. So the, make sure that takes place. Yes. City manager promised uh, the council, I think she would bring that discussion back to the council in June. So. Any other questions? Harry, as always, thank you for a great presentation. Thank you. Thank I appreciate you. it. Thank you very much. Uh, next on our agenda, uh, well, we had committee comments. Anybody have any comments, any questions, concerns, issues they'd like to address or? Bring up. Okay. Our next meeting then will be scheduled for Wednesday, June 23rd, 2022 at 6 p.m. here in the council chambers. Um, just so you know, I tried to, I spoke with our uh, city attorney and because of the Open Records Act, we have to meet in public person. We have to. It's something that until they make a change on that. So I appreciate you sacrificing and coming out. Thank you, committee members. I know it's a struggle dealing with traffic and work and all these other issues, but I do appreciate your dedication and commitment to be here. And so we'll continue to move forward and uh, make some things happen, but we do need uh, at least a quorum so we can vote on these issues and then move forward because I don't want these things to be stagnant and you know backed up and we can't move forward and present these to the council. So it's important uh, for the council, uh, for the uh, committee members to make, be here at all meetings. Yes, ma'am. Um, June 23rd, we'll be heading to GMA. Look at that date. Okay. Thank you for that. Thank so we you. We may want to consider another date. Yes, absolutely. Um, talk um, a little later in are we leaving on the 23rd? Or? Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Let me get with the uh, city clerk to see what dates are available in reference to that, and I'll get back with you with our next meeting if there's not any special call meetings before that time. Okay.
All right, everybody, thank you so much. Thank you for our communications people that made this happen. Thank you for our deputy city clerk for being here to record this information. I hope everyone have a wonderful evening. You still have some daylight before the sun, before the street lights come on so you can go home and enjoy some of this day. Have a, be safe. This meeting is over.